And uh, as I say, it's a, it is a, a rather a privilege of mine to actually <clears throat> speak to you because uh, I'm unfortunately one of your, your later fans. Uh, I think I was born in the year that uh, the band actually formed. So. <laughs> it's in 68. Yes, that's right. 68, the band was formed, yes. Yes, yes. In 68, we came together the first time. It's next year, 30 years ago. Can't believe it, eh? <laughs> um, Yaki, if I may, um, as I say, obviously there's, uh, there is over 30 years of history with the band, but uh, as I say, we, uh, we won't delve too much into that because I think otherwise we'll probably be here all night. But um, as I say, just as, <laughs> just as far as, uh, as I say, the, uh, the, the, the recent Sacrilege project um, that came out, obviously um, that was... Uh, something that had been brewing for uh, for a little while uh, but could you sort of uh, tell us a little bit more about that project and, and uh, why you chose to to release that now it was not our idea the, the idea of remixing the can material was from, from from daniel miller he's a he's a chief of new trackers yes and, and since we, anyway, the, the whole can catalog is at Mute Records, so Daniel Miller decided there should be a, a remix. Because so many people like the, like old can material. And uh, especially a lot of younger people, DJs and, 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 tech, and new electronic music people, they're, they're all... Uh, mentioned can as an uh, early influence for them. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's just the right time now to have this remix. Right, right. Is it, is it sort of... Yeah, that, Sorry? No, I think that the whole development of can has uh, indeed led to, to this point. So I think if can has, has existed longer than... It only existed about nine years. If it had existed longer as a group, I think the music, musical development would exactly be there where this new remix album is. Yes, yes. Because of more, of more at that time when we started, there were not so many techni technical uh, uh, possibilities. No, not at all. It was just the beginning. The first synthesizers, I think, just, just came out at that time. The first, I think we had one of the first drum machines at all, a very primitive little instrument. Right, right, right. Well, because you can hear it on the one track of Cam. It's called Spoon. Maybe you know that. Yes, I do. I think it's from the Antago Margo. Yes. And this one, this was the first thing we did the drum machine. I mean, there's some more drum machine on the, on the Targo, Targo Margo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, but in, in, in Spoon, it was, it played together with, with normal drum sets plus this rhythm, rhythm machine. I think for me, this was a, a start uh, to work more together with machines mm. that day. So uh, nowadays I play music which is, uh, I still play drums. I don't play the electronic drums. I play normal analog drums. But the, the way of playing it, it it's, uh, you can say it's really influenced by drum machines. For me, it was a big influence. Sure, sure. It's actually the whole development. The whole development is, uh, is 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 now there where the can remix album. So everybody agrees. Everybody of the group agrees to to this new album. Everybody likes it. Sometimes I think it's it, it's much to me. It's more interesting than listening to the old can records. Uh -huh, uh -huh. As I as I say, just just going back to as I say from from when you started in, in late 68. I mean, you basically took on something. I mean, even until, I think even early in the 80s was still something that was pretty um, alien. I mean, it must have um, it must have been an incredibly interesting time for you because you were, you were basically, if you have to look at it, uh, creators um, because there was nothing for you to reference to. Uh, you were creating this music out of, out of nothing. Um, and now to see it so, to, you know, to see it being as big as it is, nearly 30 years later. I mean, how does that how does that make you feel? I don't know. It's. I 
while a shoe when it was very creative, we had to be creative because we didn't want to copy the normal rock, rock music. Like mm. there were Rolling Stones, Beatles, and then uh, Led Zeppelin, and uh, hundreds of famous groups at that time when we started. But, uh, but we could not copy the Rolling Stones. So, and we could not, not copy any, any uh, in English and, and American music. I mean, you have to be born there to to to, to play that music. So we had, we had to find something else. So we concentrated on on maybe finding a different sound. Right, right. Like there was already electronic music at that time. I mean, two of the two members of the group, Olga Schukai and and yeah. Hermit Schmidt, they actually were were pupils of Karl Heinz Stockhausen. Yes. And. Uh, Karl Schuckert, I think, was one of the first electronic music people. But I mean, what was it like? No way. Yes, I do. As I say, but, but what was it like for you? I mean, taking something like that, that was, I mean, still a very, very new thing, um, and thinking to yourselves that this would be something that could actually work uh, around the fact that bands like the Rolling Stones and uh, the Beatles and so on were doing something completely different to you. And now you come along yes. with, with this electronic music. Um, to say at that point, probably very primitive, just to the you know, in putting putting it together because you didn't have that kind of technology. But um, was it uh, was it sort of strange, uh, you know, to, to do something like that? No, actually, we, we were in a, in a different position than than normal bands were at that time. That means when they start the band, we knew. We have to have our own studio, right? Because we cannot go to a, a normal commercial studio and and go there and, and create this music because we didn't write any music before. That was the main difference, I think. So we are not in the tradition of of songwriters at all. There was never never anything written for Ken. So none of us had made any uh, made any notes. Nothing. So we went to our our studio, which was in the beginning very primitive. We put right. a, a two-trick recording, a Rebox, modified Rebox that runs on 38, and a very primitive mixer. And in the, in the beginning, we also used radio for amplification, just to put the guitar through the radio because we had not no real good equipment. Right, right. But I think this this fact. Was was very important because this caused caused create creativity. Mm, yes. You know, later later after about five six years, we had all all technical. Uh, we had multi track machine, a huge mixing console, and and lots of extra effects and all all kinds of technical things. But from that time, I, I think our creativity was was limited. Mm, yeah. We had too many possibilities. We, we had, and in the beginning when we started, we had only a few possibilities. So to create what we wanted, we have to we had to think about. Like if we want some reverb, we we had no reverb, good reverb system. So we made one. At that time, we worked in an old castle near Cologne here. Right. And there was this this marble staircase. So we put the loudspeaker out there in the in the staircase and a microphone, microphone and played the sound out to the staircase and recorded it through the microphone. And, and that was incredible, uh, incredible uh, reverb. Right, right. Probably something that couldn't be created by a machine. I don't know, but uh, we had no other chance, so we thought we have to do it that way. Mm. So, I mean, in the primitive way, I think that was the right way. Yes, because I mean, I think in a, in, in a lot of ways, uh, you know, you because of your, you were probably better inventors than you were musicians. But in, in being able to, you know, find ways of creating the sounds that you were looking for, um, you know, there came the sound of Can. I mean, it's not necessary. Not necessarily, we were looking for certain sounds, but we we wanted to to
you, you take that sound then. You just define it like you walk a uh, walk, uh, <coughs> walk for a walk <coughs> and uh, you suddenly you see something you have not expected. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> no problem. Uh, it's the weather is not so good in this summer here. In, in, in color. Yes. <laughs> Every day. Yes, the weather is not good. Yes, it's really a disappointment this year with summer here. I hope you have no problems with summer there, probably. No, no, at the, at the moment we, we're in the middle of winter, so um, it's... Uh, winter? Yeah. Winter there? Yes, right. That's right, yeah. The southern hemisphere. That's right, that's right. Right, right, right. right. It's winter there, but is there real, real winter there? No, no, no not as... Like no, no. No, not in the not in the uh, the European sense. No, it just gets bitterly cold, but we don't get uh, we don't get snow. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, um, Yaki, as I say, getting back to um, again to the to the Sacrilege album, um, as much as it wasn't uh, uh, your you know um, your baby, as it were, but uh, did were you uh, closely involved with putting the album together? You know, with choosing which albums would be selected and which ones would be remixed. I mean, we, we, we not even elected the, the people who mixed it. Oh, no. Except a few, uh, we knew a few people like Francois Kevorkian, which was one of our, of our favorite mixes, mm -hmm. Francois Kevorkian. Just met him, he recently lives in New York. Right. And uh, there are two, two German people having a remix of West Bank. And another one is called Herr Liquid, he's actually from Cologne. Yes. And all the other ones are, I think, from England. And Brian, Brian Eno is an old friend of ours. Yes, I'm sure. Anyway. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, because... But there are some other people I've not, not met before, like a guy called Jared. Yes. Who is, uh, I think, one of the... Best DJs at the moment. Yes, yes, yes. As I say, I mean, and, uh, uh, but it, but it must be, you know, as I say, even just listening to you talking about the uh, the fact that you had your own studio again, um, that is, uh, you know, I think in, in mainstream music uh, and in dance music as well. But it's a it's a pretty new concept for bands, you know, to build their own studios to do all of these things. I mean, what amazes me is that. Uh, you you were doing a lot of these things uh, when traditionally it wasn't a thing for bands to do. Yes, I think I think we have done some things we have to done ten or twenty years earlier already. Yeah. Like the idea of you must have your own studio. That's what everybody today has. Right? Yes. Yeah. Now today it is something. Yeah. Normal. It's, 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 there are so many techniques. Such uh, high technology today, so you can you can have your own studio at home for, for quite a, a low price. Mm. I mean, maybe a thousand times lower than it would have been uh, twenty years ago. Mm. 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 Absolutely, there's no problem. So all the the, the modern groups, I think, the, the, they have their own studio. Yes, yes. And I mean, when when you listen back to uh, what these people did with the remixes is it, is it interesting for you uh, to see how they um, have, have obviously worked the material and you know obviously heard different things with the tracks and then remixed it you know for you to now obviously listen back to Sacrilege and, and just hear what you know um, hear those remixes uh, and compare them to to what you did originally yeah okay they, they, they are quite different I'm, I'm I think I like the mixes, which are really different from the original, I like best. Why is that? that is, for me, it's more interesting to, to listen to. It's like listening to somebody else, else's uh, ears. Mm. To listen to the, the, with the ears of uh, Brian Eno or whoever. Yes, yes, yes. It's yes. more interesting. I know all the old time material and I have, I have made it and I know everything. So I never listen to the... Uh, Material because I know too, too well. Know everything. Yes. So yes. now the new remix, I can exactly hear what they have done. Yes. What they have changed or what is 
in some, some mixes there's only a little bit left, you hardly can recognize what it was. Right, right, right. And those are the ones you prefer? Yeah, they, most of the tapes, they couldn't remix in the, in the, in the sense of a multi-track remixing. They, they just got a two-track recording. That's what they had for the first three records, I think. And, and the first three, four records were our best tracks, I think. They were just recorded on two tracks. So these people got the two-track tape. They, there was nothing they could remix. Yes. So they maybe had to, they load it on hard disk and, and edit it and uh, change something around so, and play with it, I think. I think uh, I, I really like the new album. Mm, mm, mm. And a really nice. lot, of, lot of old can tricks, uh, they are really uh, <coughs> shocked, I think, <laughs> in some people. <laughs> Yeah. But I mean, times and times change, and uh, it, it, it doesn't stay like it was, of course. And the music, it's all, all this music, on the, it, it continues and develops because it's living music. It's not that music like both, uh, Beethoven, Mozart. <coughs> this music lives and it changes all the time. So after now 30 years, the music would have changed if it had continued. Mm -hmm. I mean, is, 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 is that something that uh, you, that sort of makes you very proud of the fact, as you say, that your music is, is living and it'll probably, I mean, I don't think half of the influence that you've had on on a lot of, I'd say, modern, modern music culture and dance culture, I don't think it's been fully realized even, even now in 1997. I think there's still a a, a lot that uh, people are still going to take from you. Does that sort of make you feel good? Oh, of course, it makes me feel good, but uh, uh, I, I do not feel uh, responsible. Or it just happened, so yeah, yeah. You know what I, yeah, but I mean, I didn't intend. Uh, there was no intention when we when, when we started yes. music. So I could not predict what would happen in, in 20 years. Right, right. And I mean, if, if you look at all the material that has been released, and especially, I mean, obviously the back catalogue um, that the news has now re-released, um, how much material is there still um, out there that you that you haven't put out that, uh, you know, that you're perhaps still sitting with? Are you, do you have any, any idea that uh, of actually releasing that um, at a later stage in some form? There, there are still a lot of tapes with live recordings, and uh, there are plans to, to release some live recordings, but I'm not sure about it, if it really happens. I don't know how good the recording is, and, and most of the live recordings were not very good, so it means a lot of work. And I don't know, it might happen. Holger, Holger has plans to, to remix all the live recordings. Interesting, yeah, yeah. And, and as I say, obviously the, the, the band hasn't uh, been together, uh, you know, as you say, I mean, in, in your whole career you were together for nine years. What's, uh, what, what do you, what were, what were the band members doing, um, you know, well, once the band broke up, I, mean, I think, say, in the last, uh, well, in the, in the 90s, um, has your focus just been on, on re-releasing um, the material? And, or do you still partake in, in, in music sort of actively? Uh, <laughs> uh, that was quite a long question. Sorry. Uh, um, uh, I mean, we, we, we stopped in, in about what, when was 70, 70, 77, we made our life, last uh, live performance. Yes. In Spain and Portugal. It was one of the biggest concerts and one of the best, uh, uh, this is the most enjoyable concerts we had. And after that, we decided to, to finish because we found out that, that our creativity was not as, as strong anymore as in the beginning. And so the, we, we just decided to, to, to stop the to stop the group, but it, it doesn't mean they are not friends anymore. The, the, the personal relationship even got better after that. Really? 
Yes, yeah, of course, we, because we felt more free and yes, like in the group, you, you, you have to take all the responsibility for the other ones also, each of us. And there's some tension in this, of course. And after we split, there was no more this tension. So, and more freedom for, for, for each of us. So everybody is fine after that has worked on his own projects. And we uh, have a good relationship together. Just work together in, to, to try to go in England for promotion action. And, uh, three weeks ago we were in New York together. I had a good time, fantastic. Right, yeah, because of that. Do not live. Sorry. We do not live in the same place. Two of us live in France. <coughs> and two other members live in Cologne, all by me. Right. So there's not uh, everyday contact there. Mm -hmm. But occasionally we, we work for, like I work for Irving sometimes for Michael Corolli and talk for Holger. We work together still. Right. Jimmy Smith is not writing an opera at the moment, so I, I probably have to produce the whole look, the percussion section of the opera. That's fantastic, yeah. So you're still very, obviously, still very active um, in your separate roles. Yes, yes, yes. yes. yes so I, I play a lot, I mean, I, I think more than uh, at can time. <laughs> at that time, we did it maybe two or three. British tour or French tour every year. Right, right. Now I, I play much more. I travel a lot to England. Occasionally I play with Charles Robbie, I don't know. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Robbie and the invaders of the Haza, which I've worked in more than 10 years. Right. But I've been occasionally in all, on all its records. Right, right, right. So I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, you, you must be in. Uh, in demand, I think, by, uh, by musicians and probably producers alike, you know, just based on, on what you did with uh, with Can, and obviously then uh, your, your, your work outside of Can. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not doing so much work for other people. No. Basically, I work for, work for myself. If I work at the moment, I work with a small group of two synthesizers, just drum. And it sounds quite, uh, uh, I don't know what to say, from today, it's a good yes. sound. Yes. It synthesizes a lot of uh, automatic things on the, on the synthesizer. And I play drum, drum, it is. Right, 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 right. And um, as I said, um, do you, do you uh, I mean, you obviously now with things like Sacrilege, you, um, you, you promote that and uh, Know, anything that is sort of obviously can related, you're still going to uh, sort of spend time promoting that. But uh, if you have to sort of look at the, uh, if, if can had to have formed um, now, um, do you think it would have been um, as hard for you uh, to get to the point that you did? Or would it be easier if the band was going to say the band had started in, in say the late eighties or early nineties? No, I have to say no. If it was easier, I think I, I, it was for us. It was the, the right time when we started. Because, because the, we were quite the first people in Germany who who started this kind of music before, of course, there was jazz music. Mm -hmm. But then, then it changed to some some other music, the living music, I mean. And uh, we couldn't play directly rock music. Yes. Because we had no blues feeling and all this uh, American feeling. We had, had, hadn't got it. So we, we didn't want to copy, of course. Um, Yaki? Thank you very, very much for for your time. Um, this is how I, I appreciate it, and it's it's been a it's been a privilege speaking to you. And, um, although, as I say, I, I wasn't there from the from the beginning. Um, I think your work is 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 excellent, and um, I think as I said, I think it is still going to it's going to be influencing 
um, a lot of musicians for, for quite a few years yet. No, I don't. I you. <laughs> but Jackie, um, have, a, have a, a lovely weekend and, and thank you very, very much again. Yes. As I say, in, in, in case you have more questions, also, just, uh, just call me. Great. Is this, is this, this is your home number? Yes, yes. Great, great, because I, I will be starting, to, um, I'm going to be putting this out to a number of publications here in South Africa, so what I will do is, um, if, I, if I do need anything, I'll give you a call, um, but uh, whatever goes out, um, I will send through to Mute in London, um, and um, I'll get them to pass copies of the editorial on to you, just so that you can see uh, what we did with it. Yeah. Is that okay? Fantastic. Great. Yes, yes, yes. Lovely. But say, so, Yaki, thanks very much again. And, so, and, and uh, I hope your cold gets better. Yeah, yeah. Very much. Good, good. Yes. Great stuff. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you again. So, hear you again. Lovely. Thank you. Huh? Yes. Bye. Bye bye.